You know, I realized when I get into something, it's usually due to some roundabout method. A quick and easy example would be Naruto. I didn't even slightly care about Naruto until I played Clash of Ninja 2, which compelled me into watching the show, then eventually with the manga. I only got into Fatima Alchemist because I heard the opening songs at karaoke, and so on and so forth. Recently, I just watched the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero movie and this did it for me. I did read a bit of the manga and saw some of the cool Sakuga fight scenes from the anime, but it still did not pull me enough to do a full deep dive into it, but the movie absolutely sold it to me. And literally the next day after that, I cut up to the most recent chapter of Jujutsu Kaisen in less than 24 hours. Needless to say, I was hooked. I don't know how MAPPA does it, but the scratchy art style of the manga is perfectly translated into things like the curse effects and the other scenes of the manga, and the person behind the story and art is Gege Akutami. Side note, Gege Akutami is apparently a pen name that and the author's real name and gender are completely unknown, so yeah. Akutami first actually started drawing manga by imitating their friends, and that soon later became inspiration to do professional manga. In the 4th grade, Akutami would read Bleach and his name Taite Kubo himself as an influence to their work. They would also read things such as Hunter x Hunter and Neon Genesis Evangelion, and in 2014, Akutami would work as an assistant to Yasuhiro Kano in Kiss Death, or Kiss X Death. What is with Japan and these names with X in them? That same year, they published their first work in Shueisha's Jump Next called Kamishiro Sosa. The next thing they would work on is a one shot called Number 9 in 2015, and another one shot called Nikai Bongai Bara Bara Juda in 2016. The following year, Akutami would publish a four chapter series called Tokyo Metropolitan Cursed Technical School, which would work as a prequel to their next work, Jujutsu Kaisen, and in turn got retroactively called Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, you know, to make the titles more concise. Just like previous analysis, I'll be looking at the inked work and then their cold work while looking at things and nuances that I find interesting about their style. For a while, I had a hard time determining if they were a digital or a traditional artist, but in an interview they had with Taite Kubo, the creator of Bleach, it is confirmed that they do draw digitally. Prior to working on Jujutsu Kaisen, most of their work was traditional, but due to not being able to control a G-Pen, they knew that they'd never qualify for a weekly series unless their art improved, and I totally get that. As someone that has used a G-Pen here and there, I'm telling you it is not easy. I know people like Takashi Obata makes it look like he's inking on butter, but the next and next of the fibers on the paper that the pen gets caught on can be a high wall to get over. So in short, Alkotami inks digitally to mitigate those issues. However, earlier I did mention that I couldn't really tell which medium they used to ink their work, and what's interesting is that during the interview, Kubo also couldn't tell and actually thought that Alkotami was a traditional artist due to having a very analog texture to it. Now taking a look at their inked work, you can notice that there are certain imperfections. Lines intersect, tangents are everywhere, and at times the line weights are all over the place. Another artist that shares these commonalities also being a digital manga artist is Tatsuki Fujimoto. And if you want to know my thoughts about his art, you could just click the card above. These imperfections are what I assume to be the reason why Kubo and others like me think that their work has a more traditional feeling to it. Because with the digital medium, you are given a level of control that you just don't have with paper and pen. Things like stabilization, layers, control Z are tools that help artists make quality work without spending so much time making it. And while I did sort of roast their draftsmanship a bit, I will say that those issues that I have are only issues if they affect the readability of the art. If I ever have to ask myself, what the hell am I looking at, then we'd have a problem. Akutami frequently uses sweeping hatching lines for things like the hair, slight shading, or for depicting fast action, which Jujutsu Kaisen has a lot of. In fact, I would even go as far to say I absolutely love how dynamic and fast paced the action is. This whole Toji vs Gojo fight is the epitome of fast action, and personally my favorite fight thus far in the entire manga. On top of that, there are these stray scattered marks that are littered everywhere that really sell their style as digital art with an analog spin to it. It even adds to a level of intensity in certain scenes, and I know I keep bringing this panel of Hunter x Hunter to show it in reference, but these loose brushstrokes along with heavy contrast give a feeling of palpable rage. Although I do have a slight gripe in regards to certain stray lines, these things. There is way too much of this kind of mark, and yeah, I guess this too is a part of their style, but sheesh. I guess for clothing, I'm alright with it, but on the human body, it just looks too messy. In this particular case, I would say less is more and use these marks to exaggerate certain muscle groups. 
On the other hand, I really like how they draw hands. Hands can make or break expressions, gestures, and all sorts of things. Their hands also do have a lot of hatching strokes, but the gesture is what does it for me. And it actually enhances the fast action fight scenes, like this part with Ghetto performing straight up CQC on this man. Now, there is a point where an artist can bring this scratchy, messy, loose style to its most extreme. I would say that these moments are best used sparingly, like, I mean, very sparingly. I'm going to give you a spoiler warning here to skip ahead to avoid spoilers about this moment in the manga, because oh my god, this is, this is my favorite moment in the manga. Okay, here we go. In chapter 150, there are two pages where some say the art declines, however that is only the case for those who don't know the context of what's going on, because just looking at this by itself in isolation would come off as looking a bit preliminary. However, you have to keep in mind that this is in the middle when Maki proceeds to massacre her entire clan for essentially being the reason for years of ostracization and for being the reason her twin sister is dead. So she's in an absolute rage, killing her family that has done this to her. With that context, these quote unquote unrefined pages turn into a visual representation of the frenzy Maki is in and the absolute struggle the family's having in trying to stop her. After these two pages, the quality goes back to the standard, but I love moments in manga that do this. Similarly to how I felt about their ink work, at a glance I could not really tell if their color work was digital or traditional, and it's the brushwork that really made me question it. It's like Akutami is going over the brush strokes with a dry marker like effect, and it works really well because it goes well with their inking style. It works well for things like Curse Energy and this image with Yuji, or in this piece with Yuta's Blade. If you look at it under a microscope, it can come off as unrefined, but it all comes together when looking at the full picture. They paint the shadows with rough, swift strokes, and it sort of goes over the contour of some of the folds. And again, you can see the layering effect Akutami uses, especially on the clothing and fabric, like in this piece with Gojo. The drastic change in color palette is something that digital artists have the ability to control due to technically having no limits as to what colors they can choose, and this cover in particular has jewel tones all over the place. I don't usually recommend this, but this is one of the times where it does work. But alternatively, Akutami can have a very controlled color palette, like in this piece with Maki and Mai, and personally, I think this piece in particular is done beautifully. The lower saturation gives it a very somber feeling to it. And considering what happens during this part of the story, it is very appropriate. Overall, Gege Akutami is another manga artist that can add to that list of artists that have that rough, loose, sketchy art style that I keep talking about. A list that is composed of Ishida Sui, Tatsuki Fujimoto, Itadaki Padu, etc, etc. While Akutami may be a digital artist, it is their analog touch that gives their inked work a traditional flair to it. Although I do think that it could be a bit messy, again look at this back, I just could chalk this up to being a component of their aesthetic, and just like their inking style, the coloring is just as rough. They use multiple overlapping strokes to give it an effect akin to a real marker, and with all that being said, I feel that Akutami is sort of paving the road in making digital manga that looks traditional. And sure, while there are many manga artists that make manga digitally, unlike Akutami, there's something about their aesthetic that really gives it a way that they are drawn digitally, if that makes sense. If you want to support Akutami then, I hope you like Jujutsu Kaisen since they don't have any other social media or art books that have exclusively their illustrations at the time of this video. If you're unsure that you like Jujutsu Kaisen like how I was, I would heavily, heavily suggest watching the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero movie. It's a prequel in which you don't have to know anything about the main story and it absolutely hooked me into it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. What is good guys? I'm back at the end of the video, finally uh, able to scratch Gege Akutami off the list. Um, it's about time actually, uh, I have I've been seeing a lot of people request him and um, again, I, as you've seen from the video, if you've watched it, um, I got inspired to do him after seeing the movie. So. I sort of wanted to get to him while his artwork was fresh in my mind because if I didn't, um, I just have a hard time just looking throughout the manga for specific pages that I have to look forward to match the things I'm saying in the video, which is, um, I guess, the eternal struggle of doing these videos is collecting material and editing any text to sort of mitigate spoilers. Um, 
so yeah um i don't know what artist i'm going to do next i i think i might go back to doing just an illustrator so i could just avoid looking for manga pages because oh boy i'm tired and again i'm seeing the requests you guys put in the comments so yeah just want to know i am <laughs> i feel like i have to say this at the end of um the end of these analysis but just know that i am looking at them i'm not responding to all of them because um I'll, I'll be in the youtube comments for me almost every day but just know i am seeing them and they're on the list and the list is ever changing growing and expanding so just keep that in mind um we're gonna do some more art videos just for a while um might just throw in a speed painting here or there um should i do youtube shorts i sort of don't want to so yeah oh snap scared the hell out of me all right that's my cue if my devices are making noises now so um, yeah thank you guys so much for watching like the video comment if you'd want and subscribe if you want um the link to my socials are in the description for my twitter instagram patreon um now whatever socials whatever else i have um you can follow me if you want i have a twitch too that i barely use that i need to start using eventually but um you can follow me there if you want i'm definitely gonna use it eventually but um you know it, 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 time will tell so yeah again thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one